maximize the role of public-private partnerships, especially in filing in the infrastructure financing gap. There's a need to adopt innovative tax measures, including levying environmental and carbon taxes, and taxing high net worth individuals, conspicuous consumption, and politically exposed persons. Strengthen the fight against tax evasion and least financial flow. Government should establish information flows about citizens' wealth and abroad. Develop active management of assets and liabilities, especially idle government assets, to identify income generating opportunities and risk tax revenue. Increase the capability of uh, countries to negotiate favorable tax treaties. Sign bilateral and multilateral economic and diplomatic ties to increase trade flow volumes, attract investors, and ensure international cooperation on taxation issues. For the long-term policies, uh, there's a need to reform revenue agencies and state-owned enterprises. Diversify the economy from commodity dependence to build a stronger fiscal base, especially in resource-rich countries. Improve local content to embrace value addition in the extractive industry and also in the agricultural industry. Establish regional ICT ops for the development of digital tools and applications customized for African countries to accelerate digitalization of DRM and PFM in the continent. Develop and implement a framework for regional infrastructure, public-private partnerships to facilitate mobility, trade, and integration of the continent. Develop and explore the taxation potential of renewable energy initiatives. Adopt international treaties, which can help to remove double taxation, prevent tax evasion and avoidance, foster the exchange of information for tax purposes, and ensure tax cooperation and administration assistance for international taxation. Control the exploitation of African countries national resources and tax payments. Strengthen the mechanism to fight against illicit financial flows. Countries should embark on a bilateral and multilateral diplomatic engagements to press for the repartition of stolen assets from their countries. Build a monitoring and risk analysis system. So our conclusion. Like I said earlier on, there is no single set of solutions that will ensure improved domestic resource mobilization in Africa. This is because countries exhibit wide variation in their respective economies. Across the case studies, study, revenue mobilization is a cumulative process, and I want us to take note of that. Revenue mobilization is a cumulative process that it is a gradual process. It is not a one shot fit all that you start today and you hit the target today. You have to take a lot of forms and it's a gradual process before you actually get everything right. Africa needs to devise new and uh, innovative domestic resource mobilization instruments and strengthen the effectiveness and efficiency of. Uh, existing ones. Africa must address its infrastructure constraints. That is extremely needed for us to be able to bring about efficiency and ease of deal business and a lot of other benefits and create opportunities for the system. Infrastructure deficits constrain investments 
regional integration into African trade and technology development. It is imperative that Africa adopts innovative digitization framework, resources of the institutions responsible for the mobilization of domestic resources and regulations hold much to an enabling external environment of good governance and the rule of law to curb corruption and world of political interference. Indeed, most institutional modernization has benefited from a stable political and economic environment, as well as from sustained strong political support. Adequate monitoring and evaluation, M and A, of DRM reforms is greatly needed. We need to track whatever type of reforms we are bringing in in the continent, in our various countries. If the MA is weak, we won't be able to get adequate feedback on what we are trying to do. Nevertheless, as a final word, domestic resource mobilization, DRM, success requires strong political, economic, and institutional foundations. Uh, on this note, I want to say a very big uh, thank you for everyone uh, for listening uh, to me. Uh, I really appreciate your uh, attention all through. So thank you. You can now go ahead and, and take uh, comments and uh, discussion and uh, strategies that uh, can further assist us in uh, Africa to work mobilizing uh, domestic uh, resources in an efficient and effective way. Merci beaucoup, professeur. Uh, je crois que la présentation a été très appréciée. Je vois beaucoup de, de signaux positifs envoyés par les participants. Alors, cette dernière présentation portait sur les, les stratégies euh, que l'on peut mettre en place pour justement améliorer la, la mobilisation des ressources intérieures et même que euh, accroître des investissements en Afrique. Je crois qu'il a été présenté des options à la fois politiques et économiques dans cette présentation. Euh, nous avons également eu des, des solutions à, à court, moyen et long terme qui peuvent être envisagées. Et surtout, il y a eu des études de cas de, de certains pays qui ont plus ou moins réussi justement dans la mobilisation de, de leurs ressources internes. Donc, je crois qu'il y a suffisamment de matière pour ouvrir les, les débats. Euh, voilà, vous pouvez contribuer soit en posant des questions, soit en apportant justement votre expérience, euh, car nombreux parmi vous sont des experts dans, en la matière. Alors, nous allons commencer par le, le chat en attendant que des, des volontaires lèvent la main. Euh, dans le chat, il y a une question. So, uh, professor, in the chat, there is one question. You can uh, answer that question. Why waiting for participants to raise their hands? Somebody is asking how uh, tax uh, could be an effective strategy uh, in a country uh, where uh, majority of the population is in the informal sector and has no income. No, there's no way <clears throat> people, we have no income in the informal sector. Uh, right, uh, you can have a significant portion. What we are saying is that we want to bring them to the tax rates. Those that trades that are traders, uh, market women, uh, roadside, and everything about them from our sector. So we want to bring them to the tax rates because they also enjoy one or two opportunities from the uh from the government. So that's actually what we are saying. There's no way any trader will not have any income or any market person will not have any income. So we can use indirect taxes 
uh, or enhance indirect taxes, such as value added as tax. Oh, can you hear me? I cannot, I cannot hear you. Apologies, I may I lost uh, the internet. I had to quickly change my source of internet. I think you can hear me now. Yes, I can hear you both. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah. So as I was saying, that uh, we can use indirect taxes. Uh, we can also for, to get the e-commerce e sector to the uh, tax net. Uh, we can use uh, digital economic taxation uh, as a digital platforms uh, grew. Uh, they provide an opportunity to generate revenue through taxes, uh, online advertisement and data subscriptions. Uh, property taxes, I don't know, we'll bring in the informal sector. You can also charge sector specific levies on the informal sector. And uh, you can also simplify taxation for small businesses and uh, that's a sentence for formalization. I think the formal. Just or maybe tax holiday, and then we can use of increased use of technology, and uh, that can actually enhance uh, the bringing in of the informal sector uh, into the uh, various uh, tax nets. I think that uh, answer answer the question on that particular regard. So let me check. Uh, Another question as well. Somebody is asking, um, and are there any CSOs currently working in these uh, areas uh, in the continent? Well, the the issue about uh, CSO is that uh, each country as a specific uh, CSOs, mm -hmm. and then their focus differs across uh, across boards. So, in, you know, in different countries, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you have some CSOs that are health related, some are education related. Uh, it could be the fact that. Uh, yeah, to try to promote good governance, which indirectly affects uh, uh, what would I call it domestic resource uh, uh, mobilizations. So it depends on the particular type of uh, CSUs uh, that are actually working. But I know we have the African Tax Administration Forum staff that works on uh, to strengthen the tax systems and it has domestic resource mobilization in African countries is one of them. We have the uh, Justice Network Africa, Task Justice Network Africa, TJNA, uh, that also advocates for fair tax systems and transparency. Uh, the work on issues like tax justice, uh, combating illicit financial flows and enhancing domestic, and uh, we have budget advocacy network 
Uh, they actually based in Nigeria. I know they focus on improving budget, uh, transparency, and accountability. They, I know we have Osfarm Africa. And Osfarm has various initiatives uh, across the continent uh, that include uh, promoting equitable tax systems and advocating for increased domestic resource mobilization. Then we have African Women's Development Fund, uh, where the primary focus is on supporting women's rights organization. They also engage in advocacy uh, for better resource uh, mobilization. We have ISA, that's an initiative for social and economic rights in Uganda. Uh, and then they also try to promote a better domestic resource mobilization. So some of these agencies collaborate with national governments or international agencies and other stakeholders uh, to improve the effectiveness of uh, domestic uh, resource mobilization efforts in uh, in Africa. Uh, so we have uh, uh, we have. Um, uh, different uh, set of uh, uh, so uh, so what is asking on the development of the uh, going behind market continue. What are your thoughts for domestic uh, resource mobilization, domestic resource management? to tackle uh, a green uh, a climate change. Well, the issue of uh, climate change is uh, uh, quite diverse. That is one of the things that uh, I can first of all say about it. It's uh, quite diverse across uh, uh, different areas. But I know that uh, domestic resource mobilization it's crucial for addressing climate change, especially in developing countries where external funds may be insufficient, like in Africa. So maybe we can have an enhanced taxation uh, uh, procedure. Uh, that is one particular area we may need to uh, take uh, uh, into consideration. And uh, Government can reform the uh, tax policies to generate more revenue and uh, use it for climate action. That is one particular area that uh, we can take a look into it today. We can also provide climate resilient taxation system. Uh, within our taxation system, let's build a climate resilient taxation system. So African countries can develop and implement a taxation system that incentivizes climate. Uh, friendly practices that will involve uh, carbon taxes or levies on activities with high greenhouse gas emission, as well as tax incentive for investment in renewable energy and energy efficiency. So we may try to tax less of uh, renewable energy so that you can actually promote uh, green and uh, reduce the effect of uh, climate change. Then, and fossil fuel subsidies. That's another area that we need to take into, uh, into consideration because many African countries have provided subsidies for fossil fuels, which can actually undermine uh, climate goals. We want to look at uh, green bonds and sustainable investments and uh, call it the issuance of uh, green bonds and creating sustainable investment funds. And actually, also attract to Mexican uh, international investors to finance the uh, climate related projects. We can also strengthen climate finance uh, mechanisms as well to establish a uh, enhanced national climate uh, uh, finance and also public private uh, partnerships. And uh, can also bring about uh, collaborations between government, businesses, and civil uh, society. Can enhance revenue collection management. Uh, when we try to improve trust administration, output tax evasion, 
this can increase domestic revenue that can apply to climate initiatives. Because I know we have a lot of climate issues uh, in Africa. So also capacity building and technical assistance can go a long way in also being able to do this. And uh, we can look at the uh, climate resilient uh, infrastructure investments, uh, policy integration and planning, and leveraging regional cooperation. By focusing on this strategy, uh, Africa can better mobilize domestic resources to tackle uh, climate uh, uh, change, uh, build resilience, and promote uh, uh, sustainable development in, uh, in Africa. Uh, uh, Zanga from Burkina Faso. I'm sure Aime will have to help me to interpret uh, the uh, question that uh, is asking in French. Uh, Prof, we, can, we can take all the questions in English. Uh, we give the floor to uh, French-speaking participants. So you can take all the questions together now and then... Uh... Okay. <clears throat> Uh, do you want to take a, uh, do you want us to take a break, Aime? Uh, uh, it depends on you. It depends on you. If you want to uh, break a few minutes. That, I would like a 10 minutes break to use the... 10 minutes break. Okay, uh, that's fine. So, uh, come back, uh, okay. 10 minutes is fine for me. Just 10 minutes. Break. Okay, that's fine. Okay. So we we resume at um, uh, 11... 11.05. Uh, 11.05, yeah. Okay. That's fine. Okay, mm. thank you. Alors, chez Paxmo, on va observer une petite pause euh, de 10 minutes pour okay. permettre aux onze de souffler. Donc, on prend 11 h 5 minutes, heure de Dakar. La pause est 10 minutes. Merci.
Prof, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, uh, I think that we can resume. So we can, uh, we can continue now. Go to we French speaking participants. Um, Monsieur Soumano, vous allez prendre la main. Ensuite, Monsieur Gérard Goko. Et après cela, ce sera Monsieur Julien Zanga. Je commence avec Monsieur Soumano. Vous pouvez activer votre micro et parler. <coughs> Bonjour à tous, merci beaucoup de me donner la parole. Je remercie le professeur Babatonde pour cette brillante présentation. Moi, j'ai deux questions. La première, elle est relative aux initiatives africaines pour l'investissement au niveau de, de l'Afrique et de, au niveau de certaines régions, comme on l'a vu euh, dans les cours tels que les NEPAD, l'ADA, euh, l'initiative de DACA. Je voulais savoir quels ont été vraiment les, les résultats concrète de ces initiatives. Est-ce que ces initiatives ont pu atteindre leurs objectifs Sinon, quelles sont les principales difficultés qui ont été observées, rencontrées pour la mise en œuvre de ces initiatives La deuxième question, elle est relative au rôle de la Banque centrale. On a vu dans l'exemple nigérien que la Banque nigérienne, que la Banque centrale a joué un rôle important à travers l'influence qu'elle a pu jouer sur les taux d'intérêt pour relancer un peu l'économie post-Covid. Nous, dans la sous-région ouest africaine, on a la banque, la BCAO, la Banque centrale des États de l'Afrique occidentale, qui peine souvent à jouer ce rôle, le troisième rôle qui est confié au niveau des banques centrales, à savoir les soutiens aux objectifs de développement économique à, à travers l'injection, par exemple, de liquidités pour soutenir l'économie. Est-ce euh, qu'au niveau de la BCAO, la Banque centrale des États de l'Afrique occidentale, on peut savoir quelles sont les difficultés à ce niveau aussi pour que cette euh, banque puisse jouer le rôle qui est confié à toutes les banques centrales à travers le monde? Moi, c'est Philippe Blonens, moi, je suis inspecteur des finances au niveau du ministère de l'économie et des finances en service à la dans la région de Sigasso, au Mali. Je vous remercie. Merci, M. Soumano, depuis le Mali. Professeur, can you respond to those questions? Uh, do you want me to reply or take the questions together? OK. I mean, what would you prefer? You take them one after the other, or we'll take like three questions together and then uh, respond. Okay, it depends on you. So I will take all the You can questions. take like three questions together, then I'll be taking them one after the other. Okay. Let's take like two other uh, comments together. Okay, that's fine. So can give the floor to... Oh, there's no other person asking questions, so I can take ah, this. Okay. You are, okay. <laughs> I was muted. Excuse me. I will give the floor to Mr. Gérard Goko. Hello. Oui, Monsieur Goko, on vous entend. Allez-y. D'accord. Bonjour, Monsieur. Bonjour. Merci pour le. Oui, allô, allô. Oui, on, on vous reçoit. Merci, Monsieur. Merci pour la, euh, les, les enseignements donnés. <laughs> Euh, ma question est euh, relative au, au, à la devise de chaque pays. La devise de chaque pays, nous avons peut-être, euh, en Afrique, on a plusieurs devises. Chaque pays, et souvent, on utilise aussi d'autres, les mêmes monnaies, mais euh, je parle par exemple du franc CFA qu'on utilise peut-être en Afrique centrale. Mais en Afrique de l'Ouest, il y a aussi des pays qui utilisent peut-être le franc CFA, mais qui n'a pas de même valeur que le franc CFA de l'Afrique centrale et d'autres pays qui ont leur propre monnaie et tout. En fait, mon inquiétude se retourne autour du, de la monnaie. Est-ce que euh, la devise ne pourrait pas aussi être un frein au développement de l'Afrique? Parce que dans tous les, les modules que nous avons abordés, je n'ai pas vraiment vu euh, un volet où on a développé, on a un peu parlé de la monnaie. Moi, je pense que la monnaie peut être un grand frein 
au développement de l'Afrique. Merci. Euh, merci pour cette question. Vous vous êtes présenté, je ne me rappelle pas. Monsieur Ngoko, est-ce que vous pouvez vous présenter brièvement Pendant que vous ne me recevez pas. Alors, on va passer à un autre intervenant. Monsieur, Monsieur Zanga, allez-y. Pardon, Monsieur Zanga, ne me reçoit pas. Voilà, je le micro était fermé. Voilà, bonjour à tous. Ouais. Bonjour à tous. Donc, je me présente à nouveau Zanga Julien, chargé de suivi et évaluation de politique publique à la direction générale de l'économie de la planification au Burkina Faso. Alors, vraiment, merci beaucoup pour les amendements. On a pris vraiment, vraiment beaucoup de plaisir avec les différents modules qui ont été dispensés. J'avais juste une question pour susciter la, la, la discussion, avoir le retour du professeur. Euh, on sait qu'en Afrique, euh, les activités euh, agro-silvo-pastorales occupent une frange importante de la population, mais j'ai comme l'impression qu'on a des difficultés avec la fiscalité dans ce secteur-là. Aujourd'hui, quand je prends mon pays, euh, les jeunes, euh, ils produisent des poussins qu'ils vendent, ils produisent des œufs qu'ils vendent, euh, etc., etc., les, les, comme on appelle des cages pour les animaux, etc., etc., qu'ils vendent. Mais comment arriver à, 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 à appliquer la fiscalité dans ce secteur-là C'est là tout le défi. Euh, je voulais juste avoir euh, l'avis du professeur donc, par rapport à ce secteur-là, qui regroupe une frange importante de la population et qui, en matière de fiscalité, n'est pas, pas toujours... Euh, euh, le secteur euh, oui. qui contribue le plus. Merci ouais. beaucoup. Est-ce qu'on euh, a you. compris? Merci beaucoup. Let's, uh, start taking the questions. Uh, one after the other. Uh, the first question is uh, why is uh, investment uh, initiatives uh, in Africa uh, such as Africa? Hello? I said that they are sustained here today. They are at the pause. You can assure that the lab is closed. So can I continue now? Thank you very much. And uh, what are the constraints uh, in terms of uh, making uh, this uh, investment initiatives uh, achieving their, their results? And like I said, I mentioned uh, investment initiatives uh, like the Dakar, initiative which was launched in 2020 to promote the sustainable development and economic growth in West Africa. I try to fix some of these initiatives, they face several challenges that can hinder their effectiveness. Uh, that's actually why some of them are not be able to perform very well. Uh, the initiative specifically aimed to enhance a cultural productivity, that's the Dakar initiative, uh, improve food security, and foster economic development uh, through targeted uh, investment uh, reforms. And uh, despite these uh, ambitious goals, uh, there have been constraints that have affected the success, uh, not just the Dakar initiatives, and some other initiatives as well. And uh, some of these uh, constraints that they have faced in not being able to achieve their success include the uh, insufficient funding, and uh, resources. Many investment initiatives uh, struggle with uh, securing 
uh, necessary financial resources. And even when commitments uh, are made, if they don't get adequate funding. That's a big constraint for them. And uh, the actual disbursements of funds can be delayed or even inadequate. Uh, for example, for the Dakar initiatives, uh, inconsistent funding and uh, lack of uh, uh, sufficient financial backing have uh, limited uh, his ability to fully implement his uh, programs and achieve his objectives. And uh, political instability and governance issues are part of what affects some of these uh, initiatives. Uh, political instability, corruption, and weak governance uh, structures can severely impact the effectiveness of uh, development uh, uh, initiatives. There are things that we need to take into consideration. Then uh, coordinations, uh, uh, coordinations and implementation challenges is also uh, another challenge that uh, some of these uh, investment initiatives uh, face in, uh, in Africa because uh, effective implementations are, are very, are very important uh, towards making sure that uh, all stakeholders uh, are carried along, including government, international organization, and uh, local communities. Uh, if they are not well carried along, then it becomes a, it becomes a problem for everybody to be able to manage uh, effectively. And uh, I know capacity constraints, uh, most of these uh, investment initiatives, they lack uh, adequate uh, institutional and normal resource uh, capacity uh, for successful execution of uh, these investment uh, initiatives. And uh, as much as possible, when uh, this I mean, capacity constraints are there, uh, it becomes an issue. And, uh, so for us to, to be able to uh, actually achieve his uh, main, uh, uh, main aims. Then lack of ownership and engagement. Uh, some of them, this initiative lack ownership and engagement. And for them to be successful, uh, local communities and stakeholders uh, uh, must actually be well uh, grounded uh, in terms of what they are trying to do. If they are not well grounded and not well integrated into it, it can be a particular problem for us in Africa. Monitoring and evaluation issues. An effective monitoring and evaluation are crucial for assessing progress, making adjustments, and ensuring uh, accountability. Then uh, external factors and uh, global shifts. Uh, global economic conditions, changes in general priorities, and external factors uh, such as uh, climate change and external shocks affect some of these investment uh, initiatives. When there's a fluctuation in global commodity prices or shifting donor priorities can affect uh, the impact uh, availability of uh, funding from uh, domestic uh, points and then from the standard points. Then uh, you have the infrastructure and uh, logistic constraints, which is another issue, and then also social cultural barriers. So if you can address these constraints, uh, it will go a long way to actually make sure that uh, the investment initiatives in Africa are working and then uh, they're actually contributing to their ownership. But, it will require a multifaceted approach. Uh, the approach must be uh, multidimensional, multifaceted, uh, which requires that uh, we need to improve governance and accountability, increase local participation and ownership, securing consistent funding, and enhance institutional capacities. So, additionally, ensuring that initiatives are adaptable 
uh, to changing global conditions and uh, incorporating monitoring and evaluation. That is like in the most initiatives in Africa. It's not just investment initiatives. Whatever reform or good policy programs we are bringing forward, we need to have a good uh, monitoring and evaluation mechanism to improve uh, the effectiveness and achieve their objectives. And also, you ask the questions about uh, the role of uh, Central Bank of uh, West African states. Uh, what are the uh, challenges uh, that is having, uh, the difficulties is having, so that uh, it's not being able to get uh, it's, uh So I know the Central Bank of West Africa uh, is, is serving for like uh, serving. Uh, as a central bank for eight West African countries uh, that are using West African franc, CFA franc. There are some constraints uh, that is affecting the mobilization of uh, domestic uh, uh, resources. And some of these uh, uh, constraints uh, uh, include uh, economic instability and vulnerability. I know that uh, the challenges of uh, instability, economic instability and vulnerability is going a long way uh, because of factors such as uh, fluctuating commodity price, uh, political instability. Look at what is going on now in uh, Niger, in Chad, in Burkina Faso. All this uh, political instability, change in government, who did that, have implications for the CBN to be able to settle back to West Africa, PCR to be able to mobilize its uh, resources effectively. So uh, it can limit the uh, effectiveness of domestic resource uh, uh, mobilization. Then limited fiscal space. You know, many West African countries have a limited fiscal space due to high level of uh, debt and budgetary constraints. And this reduces their ability to invest in domestic development projects and can limit the resources available for uh, central banks to mobilize. Then the, the financial systems too is weak. Uh, we have a weak financial system in, in um, this particular period, in this particular uh, uh, framework as well. So, it is something uh, that we need to take into uh, consideration that uh, in some countries, financial systems are underdeveloped or poorly integrated. This can hinder the central bank's ability uh, to effectively mobilize uh, domestic resources. But it may struggle with low level of uh, financial inclusions. No, <clears throat> in some rural areas, you don't even know uh, there is a need for them to have a, an account, a bank account, uh, the deposit money banks. Uh, some of them have not been brought into the financial system. And then the banks are not going to the rural areas. So bank penetration is limited and inadequate financial infrastructure. So this can actually affect uh, uh, the, uh, the process uh, quite a lot. Then we have uh, political and institutional challenges. And uh, uh, when you have uh, political and institutional challenges like that, uh, it becomes an issue, like I mentioned earlier, uh, um, political instability uh, can actually, I mean, reduces the uh, opportunities of a uh, central bank's operation to mobilize resources. And uh, lack of autonomy or capacity constraints can also affect this uh, resource uh, mobilization. And uh, currency and exchange rate issues, uh, like the West African safety front now, uh, while providing stability in some uh, respects, also has its own challenges. Uh, for example, uh, it's peg, you know, the CFA franc is pegged to euro. Uh, can uh, expose the region to external shocks and impact the central bank's ability to manage domestic monetary policy 
and mobilize the resources effectively. Because of the fact that uh, the colonial masters, which is France, has ensured that uh, the index that particular amount to so his own currency and they also spend uh, euro. We initially, when before euro uh, came into court, the France was mainly French franc. And so uh, they were more or less like uh, uh, this CFP franc was actually back to the uh, French franc. But when euro came in, so if anything happens to euro, uh, it will also depreciate uh, the CFA franc as well. So which basically this is not uh, needed, needed or uh, necessary on uh, this particular uh, uh, scenario. And uh, also debt body. Uh, and, uh, the debt body of uh, most uh, uh, African countries uh, it's, it's quite an issue because high level of uh, national debt uh, can limit the ability of uh, governments to allocate uh, resources for development and uh, investment. <laughs> and that's a big but, uh, issue in Africa. And uh, if you take a look at it, the debt burden constrains the central bank's capacity to implement policies that might mobilize additional resources because they have to service the debts and they have to pay back. So debt servicing is really, really affecting uh, a lot of uh, activities uh, in Africa. So finally, policy coordination is another issue because each country is trying to have its own monetary policy uh, and its own fiscal policy and development goals. So coordinating them can be very, very challenging. Uh, so it's, it's something that uh, can actually bring about China, except we are, we are able to make alignments uh, between the central bank policies and the broader economic development strategies of the member countries. Unless all of them can adopt the same monetary policy are the same uh, uh, fiscal policy measure. If not, it will also continue to give us uh, some form of uh, challenges. And uh, regional integration challenges. And uh, uh, while the Central Bank of West Africa serves uh, multiple countries, uh, achieving coordinated economic policies and uh, resource mobilization efforts across uh, uh, different nations uh, with varying economic conditions and priorities can be complex and challenging because most of these other member states still belongs to some other uh, regional uh, integration uh, uh, parts. So that can actually affect because uh, they can have regional integration arrangement that uh, is not supportive for the Central Bank of West Africa. There, there is also uh, uh, also challenges of, uh, uh, how will I put it, uh, infrastructure and technological constraints. So there are limited infrastructure and uh, some of the technology that are being used are outdated. Uh, so we basically affect central bank's ability to uh, efficiently mobilize resources and manage uh, domestic, uh, domestic resources. So addressing these constraints uh, involves the combination of improving financial and national systems, enhancing regional economic integration, ensuring effective policy coordination, and investing in infrastructure and technology. By tackling uh, these challenges, I believe that uh, the Central Bank of West Africa will be able to enhance its capacity uh, to mobilize domestic resources and support uh, uh, sustainable economic development in the West African region. Uh, Gerard uh, asked questions about uh, how can we use a, a single currency to foster development in, in Africa. We mentioned it yesterday that uh, 
if you have a single currency in Africa, it will go a long way uh, towards uh, assisting uh, the continent to be able to fast track uh, economic integration. So we'll be able to boost trade across uh, countries such that uh, because a single uh, a single uh, uh, currency can reduce the uh, transaction costs and exchange risk, uh, exchange rate risk, it can facilitate trade between uh, member countries. And this can lead to increase the uh, intra-African trade, which is vital for economic growth and development. We've been saying this all these years that uh, we need to enhance intra-African trade and a single currency measure is one of the things that can actually do that. The market uh, expansion. A larger unified market uh, can attract more foreign direct investments uh, and promote uh, economies of scale, making African economies more competitive globally if we have a single uh, uh, currency. And another advantage of having a single currency what they can foster is uh, reduce currency risk by eliminating currency fluctuations between member countries. Uh, a single currency can provide greater financial stability and predictability, encouraging both domestic and foreign investment and uh, improve the monetary policy. A single currency can enable a more cohesive monetary policy across the region, helping to manage inflation and stabilize the economy. Also, uh, a single currency can bring about increased uh, uh, domestic resource mobilization and uh, because it will simplify financial transactions and a single currency can streamline our financial transactions uh, making it easier to mobilize and allocate resources across borders. This can enhance the efficiency of financial systems and improve resource allocation. And it can also actually bring about a unified financial markets. So if you have a single currency, you can have a integrated uh, financial markets. You can start more investments and create uh, more opportunities for better resource mobilization of domestic savings. And uh, investors and uh, institutions may find it uh, easier to operate in a single currency environment. And uh, another point is the fact that a single currency can strengthen economic operations among the countries in Africa. And uh, political and economic uh, 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 corporations can actually be achieved uh, because there will be political economic stability. A single currency could foster greater economic and political corporations among the member countries, leading to more stable economic uh, policies and shared uh, development goals and uh, regional development initiatives. It can support uh, regional development projects by providing a more stable and predictable economic environment, uh, facilitating cross-border infrastructure projects and enhancing regional economic uh, planning. So for other consideration and challenges in terms of uh, a single uh, uh, currency can do, you know, economic divergence is real. Economic divergence is real under this particular uh, framework uh, in the sense of the fact that uh, member countries may have a varying level of uh, economic uh, development. And uh, inflation risk is different. Fiscal policies are different. So I'm honestly the differences uh, under a single currency can be challenging, like I said earlier on, and may require significant policy and judgment. And sovereignty concerns. Uh, every every 
every country wants to show that um, it's a sovereign nation. Uh, and it's a big issue uh, uh, in terms of trying to now uh, losing your monetary policy control. And uh, if you're adopting a single currency, definitely you give up or control over your individual monetary policies and then that can never be a issue. And also, institutional requirements. You need strong institutions. You need strong institutions uh, to be able to uh, to be able to uh, bring forth uh, to transit to a single currency. Uh, you need the strong uh, institutional uh, mechanisms. Uh, that means including changing financial system. You have to dominate your prices or money, public and private sector adjustment. The regional economic disparities, of course, uh, that brings about the regional imbalances can also be a factor and may require compensatory mechanisms to address uh, uh, disparities. And uh, public acceptance uh, can also be uh, a factor hmm? in terms of trust and confidence. And... Uh, it can be uh it can be an issues uh the eurozone is a very good example uh of uh, actually ensuring uh that uh, we have adequacy uh, having i mean it's very good sharing example of uh, uh what i call uh, a case of a single currency but if you check most of these countries in the euro system have already developed and then they were able to integrate their financial system and then their other set of uh, monetary policies. And know the CSF, CSF Frank, we are also using that. It has benefits and challenges, but the preconditions, the initial conditions of each country will go a long way for us to be able to have a, a single country, a single currency, a trading mechanism that can actually achieve uh, uh, adequacy in terms of uh, uh, domestic uh, resource uh, mobilizations. Then uh, Zanga asked questions about uh, the agricultural sector uh, that is more or less like uh, facing uh, some challenges. Uh, and uh, if you now say you want to tax this kind of uh, sector, we can actually have some uh, uh, problem in trying to do this because uh, the sector in Africa has so much informality in it. It's not well developed in a formal manner. So I think the sector even requires a lot of subsidies rather than taxes. You can tax it when there's value added uh, into it. And that tax should also be a progressive tax, not a uh, a discriminative for uh, regressive tax because if you check most of the developed economies in the in the world, they have a lot of uh, 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 a lot of subsidies are provided to uh, the agricultural sectors. Uh, so that is because there are a lot of challenges that the agricultural sector in Africa is facing. They, I know that one of them is uh, limited access to finance. Uh, the cultural sector in Africa has uh, some limited uh, access to finance, which is a uh, credit constraints, and uh, they face the challenges of uh, high interest rates. Uh, even when the credit is available, uh, it can come with uh, high uh, interest rate, making it expensive for farmers to borrow and invest in the operations. And then the challenges of low productivity and investment. And then the most uh, uh, agricultural that we are producing in Africa today is still rain-fed agriculture. It's still mostly rain-fed uh, agriculture that uh, we are having today in uh, Africa. Uh, because uh, let's check, check what happened in Meduburi about 48 hours ago. Flooding occurred. 
and then farmers they said that uh, tomato farmers were right there uh, because that's actually what uh, the place is known for. They said they've lost over one billion naira now because uh, flood has destroyed there. Uh, so that means it's going to cause some form of uh, food insecurity in that particular regard over the next two, three months. So the infrastructure deficit too, uh, because most of them lack uh, good roads, uh, storage facilities, irrigation systems, and this affects the efficiency and profitability of agricultural activities. Another challenge is that it makes it difficult for the sector to mobilize resources and making it difficult that can for us to tax it is a uh, market access and value chains. Um, we have a weak value chain system and uh, market access issues. Uh, for the root value chain system, the inefficiencies in uh, agricultural value chain systems, including processing, packaging, and distributions, uh, limit the ability to mobilize and uh, generate domestic uh, uh, resources in Africa. The market access issues, uh, farmers often face challenges in accessing local and international markets uh, due to logistical uh, problems and uh, policy and national constraints. We have a weak policy framework uh, that is inadequate to cultural policies and weak national support uh, and limit the effectiveness of the uh, resource mobilization efforts and the corruption and mismanagement. Uh, it's also another thing that affects the cultural sector. Then, like I said earlier, climate vulnerability. The agri sector in Africa is uh, basically exposed to uh, smooth vulnerable for the climate and environmental degradation. So lack of training is affecting the sector. So we can have the kind of subsidies that we should give to the agri sector. It can be input subsidies such as seeds, fertilizers, equipment, that will reduce the cost uh, for, for farmers and increase uh, their productivity and also their profitability. So they should be charged like so that uh, mainly smallholder farmers are the ones that get access to these uh, 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 input subsidies. The infrastructural investment, we need to, in Africa, uh, provides massive public investment in agricultural infrastructure, such as education and road, because whose harvest losses are usually very high for most uh, agricultural farmers in Africa. And also, uh, uh, we need to find a way of uh, providing price support to our, our marketers in Africa, our big sector, because uh, uh, subsidies can help uh, stabilize prices and protect uh, farmers from private volatility. This can provide a safety net and encourage investments in the sector. Then uh, research and development, uh, innovation, uh, subsidies for agricultural research and development, can lead to the adoption of new technologies and practices that improve productivity and resilience. Then challenges and risks. Uh, inefficiency and dependency. Uh, subsidies can lead to inefficiencies if not properly managed and may create dependency rather than promoting long-term sustainability and self-reliance. Uh, so, what we need to do in all in all, in summary, we need to find a way of improving access to finance. We need to uh, strengthen institutions, especially like cultural institutions uh, that can uh, support more effective and uh, resource mobilization and sector development. Uh, we need to enhance value chains, uh, promote public-private partnerships, and focus on education and extension uh, services. 
So where subsidies can be a useful tool to shift out of the broader strategies that uh, include the uh, improving access to finance, strengthening institutions, uh, investing in infrastructure, and it has value chain. So uh, thank you. That's the answer for those uh, three questions. I think we still have some few more minutes to, uh, to spare. Do you have other questions as well? Yes, I can see that uh, uh, it's Mr. Alum from uh, AU that would like to take the floor. <clears throat> sure. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, MA, and thank you, Prof, uh, for what you highlighted uh, earlier. Uh, my question resume uh, will be on. Uh, uh, on the challenges, uh, because uh, uh, we know your presentation is rich, and uh, also there are so many uh, uh, intake that we can we can have from this. Not in piecemeal, but I think uh, implementing. But I think so. So most of us here they wanted some uh, clear. Uh, 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 solution on how to go with some of the taxation uh, issues. But addressing these challenges require comprehensive reforms, as you say, which uh, cap uh, uh, capacity building and the adoption of the modern technology to improve efficiency and transparency. Which of these challenges do you encounter, we, do you encounter most uh, frequently when you are involving in the domestic resource mobilization? That is a. So let, let me come back again. I can't. I didn't get the question very well. I said, uh, among this uh, uh, challenge that you addressed, uh, had, have been addressed. We say that we have some who require uh, comprehensive reforms, as you said it, and the capacity building, and also the adoption of modern technology like digitalization. You said uh, to improve efficiency and transparency. Which of which of this uh, challenge do you encounter most frequently? Uh, as a, a professional on your domain, uh, on this uh, domestic resource mobilization in the country, while taking the country uh, perspective, which are the most ones that you 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 feel that uh, we cannot be uh, uh, implemented, and which one are easy for us uh, and for the country, African country, can 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 go straight forward. Sorry, that, that question is just a straightforward question. Mm. Yeah. It, what happens in each country differs. Like I said that in my presentation the other time, that uh, there is no single set of solution. What may be a problem or a challenge in country A may not be a challenge in country B. What may be the strength of country A may be a weakness of country B. The challenges will be according to each individual country. And it is that's what each individual country can actually check on or work on. So we are not be able to identify uh, the most critical challenge for a particular country, except if it actually affects that country. You know, so we can now look at it. How it affects the country and bring solution. Because like now in Nigeria now, the issue of banditry uh, is affecting agricultural produce. Uh, farmers are not able to go to the markets. Uh, to their farms, uh, even if they have to go, they have to pay money to the bandits, to the Boko Haram before they can go. But that is not the same challenge that's affecting South Africa or that is affecting uh, uh, Morocco or Namibia. So, so what we call challenges or constraints in every time we have identified or benefits or opportunities are country specific. So we may not be able to say, okay, this is the most critical challenges that we need to take a look at. We can only identify them. And when we identify them, that country can now look at the structural characteristics and now provide solution towards it. Thank you. Okay, but to Prof, uh, sorry to come back, because when you see also on your presentation that you talk about uh, to boost Africa and intra-trade, and this, you just talk about infrastructure. Uh, yes, there are some countries that also we can find you cannot even find a good infrastructure where there is no even a toll fee gate people can pay you can raise money from from this 
uh, this is a lot in Africa also. And then we see that uh, the problem, one of the related is the main problem with the DRM uh, are that not enough saving generated to facilitate the required investment related with the bank. We know the bank in Africa, you deposit, but there are not, they cannot give you because there are no guarantee for any citizen. So, any citizen. Uh, we are using uh, something that call, uh, 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 what call, call uh, uh, TADAT. TADAT is a tax administration diagnosis assessment tool. Uh, when you use this one to see a country in uh, tax per in, in per capita per country and habitant, you see like low like Burkina Faso is eleven dollars per in, in capita per persons. When you compare to the other like a, a is four thousand six hundred sixty five dollars, and now it's going. But this is the difference is existing, and you just said it for the farmer. And this, you, and you, what you say for the pharma is, I agree with you, is very with what Zanga also discussed, uh, Zanga uh, question, take about uh, how we are going to apply a tax on on the uh, to boost to to boost uh, what calling to boost uh, uh, taxes on this uh, some sector on the uh, on the ag agriculture sector or in the, in the sector, but this one. Uh, I just want to say, but sorry to say that uh, I can say that to Zanga. Pour cette, pour cette truc, tu m'excuses de te répondre en français parce qu'il ne faut pas aussi tuer certains secteurs agricoles. Le secteur agricole, il, tel que nous voilà, elles doivent être boostées parce qu'elles contribuent aussi à un système de sécurité alimentaire. Nous utilisons ce qu'on appelle un système d'anesthésie fiscale. Le système d'anesthésie fiscale, c'est quelques systèmes qu'on peut le faire à l'importation des produits qui font nourrir ces, ces volailles et que la population ne le sente pas. Et l'État récupère ça au départ de ce qu'il est en train de faire. Je crois que ça, c'est une très bonne mm -hmm. question. Et le professeur a déjà répondu à ça. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, prof. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Adam, for what actually you have been able to provide. They're valid. They're very, very, very valid points. Uh, that you have raised, and I really appreciate that. No, the bottom line of what you have uh, added to this discussion is the fact that Africans, Africans, we need to take responsibility on our own because it's a competitive world. And when we are living in a competitive world, everybody wants to get the best out of it. They know that Africa has the market. That is why they will always tell us that uh, you don't even need to farm. And that you just come and buy those uh, agri products from them. Or uh, that even when you farm, uh, just bring it in raw materials and let them do the, uh, the value addition. That you don't have the capacity for value addition. So I really, really appreciate uh, uh, those very valid points that uh, you have brought forward. That very, very, very important one. Thank you very much. I do appreciate it. <clears throat> hey, I think that there is a last, uh, last question by Tiogo. Um, thank you so Can we much. take that as our last question? Yes, sir. Okay, so let me just give a two minutes wrap up. And uh, the, the magic framework uh, this is the fact that Africa needs to take responsibility towards mobilizing domestic resources. We need strong institutions for us to be able to do this. And that strong institutions will require political and economic support. We may not need to rush because it's a gradual process, but we need to start from somewhere. Our leaders need to take a good responsibility. You can see from all our discussions that the issue of domestic resource mobilization is a multifaceted system. It is not just one single area. It has to cut across all sectors, whether it is fiscal, it is monetary, information technology, anti-corruption, anti-money laundering, the justice and legal system, the enforcement, the banking, 
a lot of hands must be on deck to coordinate all this set of uh, activities. Domestic resource mobilization is benefit affect almost all sectors from the agricultural sector, the manufacturing sector, industrial sector, that can create decent wages and jobs for us in Africa. When those wages and jobs exist, we will not find the reason to travel out of Africa to Europe and America looking for greener pasture. So therefore, we must have a coordinated effort across all economic agents, the individual, the household, the government. A lot of effort must be done. The rural communities, they should feel the presence of government with adequate infrastructure such as electricity, good roads to support their agrarian lifestyle. The informal sector, we need to bring men in using information technology. Let us standardize everything. We don't pray for another round of uh, COVID anywhere, anytime, or another external shock that we keep everybody inside, that we don't be able to work. So let us put everything together to stabilize the macroeconomic economy to make sure that political stability is reduced to the barest minimum and additional support is given to all the appropriate sectors. That is actually uh, my submission, my final submission. And I want to thank everybody from the interpreter to the secretariat, to the participants from uh, all the comments, all the uh, support and all the questions and uh, interactions we have had both at the modules and also during the live sessions. I really appreciate everybody. Thank you, Aime, Lou, uh, Puret, uh, Mensa, uh, Seth, everybody. Thank you very much for making this to work. I appreciate. So, merci beaucoup. Merci uh, beaucoup, uh, pour ces mots. Je pense que c'était le mot de conclusion. Alors, nous avons fini avec les trois live sessions qui étaient prévues dans le cadre de cette formation. Mais le cours n'est pas fini pour autant. Euh, alors, je vous invite euh, à continuer à, à suivre les enseignements sur la plateforme de formation. Vous avez le, le lien et les, et les paramètres de connexion à cette plateforme. Donc, continuez à vous connecter quand vous le pouvez et complétez tous les, les quiz euh, avant le, la fin de la semaine prochaine. Je crois que la date limite pour terminer ce cours, c'est le 20 septembre. Vous, avez, vous en avez encore jusqu'au 20 septembre pour à, compléter tout les modules et obtenir un certificat dans le cadre de cette formation. Euh, en ce qui me concerne, je reste disponible avec euh, tous les collègues de l'IDEP. Euh, nous sommes à votre question. J'avais une question. Si vous avez des, des, des questions. Qui euh, parle, s'il vous plaît? C'est Zanga. Oui, M. Zanga. Oui, merci beaucoup. Je voulais juste euh, savoir si, euh, parce que pour les quiz, c'est dit qu'on avait trois tentatives. Est-ce qu'on a obligé de faire les trois. En ce qui concerne les quiz euh, qui sont prévus pour chaque module, alors vous avez trois tentatives, comme vous l'avez dit. Eh bien, ce qui est retenu, c'est la meilleure note des trois tentatives. Donc, vous n'êtes pas tenu d'aller de, jusqu'au bout des trois tentatives. Merci. D'accord. Je crois que nous, on, on a terminé. Bon, euh, nous sommes déjà dans les questions diverses. So thank you, everybody, once again. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Donc, si il n'y a plus d'autres questions particulières concernant le déroulement du cours, je crois qu'on peut clore la session. Alors, merci à tout le monde. Au revoir. Au revoir à tous. Okay, thank you, man. Bye bye, everybody. Bye bye, bye bye, prof. Au revoir, tout à l'heure. Au revoir, tout à l'heure.